Let's consider how we non-dimensionalize equations. Non-dimensionalization is much like a coordinate transformation, where we're transforming to characteristic sets of scales within the system. If we have some sort of dimensional time, t, um, then we can think of that dimensional time as being related to some characteristic time, tau sub c, times some non-dimensional time. So here's our dimensional time in, say, seconds. And then our non-dimensional time, which is just some number, um, is over here, uh, indicated with the, uh, with the asterisks. So non-dimensional is here, with tau c, our characteristic time. So the characteristic time takes the non-dimensional time, which is some number, and turns it into, transforms it into our dimensional time, which is something like hours, minutes, seconds, or whatever else. Now, likewise, we can think of a, of a, of a length, a dimensional length, being related to some characteristic length times some non-dimensional length. And we can think of some other quantity, like a, a velocity being related to some characteristic velocity times some non-dimensional velocity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can choose what these characteristic scales are, um, and as long as you're consistent, there are no wrong choices. Uh, but there are good choices which clean up and simplify a problem. Bad choices will make your scale variables, your, your non-dimensional numbers, be very far from one or, or be numbers that don't tell you something useful about the system. Um, so to illustrate this, we're going we're gonna to start by considering a very simple system. We're going to consider the diffusion equation. So we can see how non-dimensionalization and scales work together. The diffusion equation for some quantity, some scalar quantity C, um, is given by um, a Laplacian with a diffusion coefficient, like so. So this is our diffusion coefficient. And for the diffusion equation, this is the only term that's governing the, the evolution. Now, let's, um, let's, let's make things a little, a little nicer here. We'll use uh, green for non-dimensional numbers, and we'll use, um, we'll use, uh, we'll use blue for the, um, for the dimensional bits coming out. So if we have some, so for example, dimensional C, we'll make that, um, we'll make that some, uh, characteristic C uh, multiplied by some non-dimensional C. And I'll just, I'll, I'll by and large omit these as we go. Um, and I'll use the color to, to distinguish between the non-dimensional bits and the dimensional bits here. So the way that we started doing this is we look at each of our terms and we pull the dimensional bits out in front, um, leaving the non-dimensional bits behind. So I'm going to start with our first term. So we're going to pull out our characteristic C and we're going to pull out our time scale tau. Um, and these are going to come out of the, um, the partial with respect to T um, of our quantity C. And this is going to be equal to um, now our, our dimensional diffusion coefficient. And we have a Laplacian, and a Laplacian is a second derivative. And as t came out of our d by dt here to non-dimensionalize that derivative, so too an L will come out of our Laplacian, um, non-dimensionalizing the, um, the spatial derivatives. We're going to have a C come out as well. And the, the characteristic C is not going to matter very much because each of the terms in this equation have a C, so those C's are all going to cancel. So our characteristic C's, those cancel out from both sides. And this will be true anytime we have an equation that all depends on a single term. Uh, this will not be true if we have an equation that has a mixture of different variable terms. Okay, let us now multiply across our, um, our tau variable um, our dimensional tau, and let's get our final non-dimensional equation for C. 
Um, and this is equal to something times the Laplacian of C. And this, this something, this is D times tau. Oops, I forgot my squared on my length previously. Um, D times tau times L squared. And um, D tau L squared must have units, uh, dimensionless units. Um, and this is our dimensionless number. And we often say at this point that we have non-dimensionalized the equation. Um, we've gathered all of the dimensional terms up into a single dimensionless number. Um, you can check this for yourself by recalling that a diffusion is like a centimeter squared per second. So it's a length squared per time. Um, and so, so here we go with the system. All right, so here's our, um, here's our non-dimensional system. Um, th there's a little bit of a mantra when doing these, especially as we go to coupled systems and equations, which is that um, once you've picked a tau and a length scale, stick to it. Um, all, of the, all of the time derivatives, they all have to be on the same tau. All the spatial derivatives, they all have to be non-dimensionalized on the same length scale. Um, if, if you start trying to mix and match taus or length scales, you're like, well, this, this coupled equation has one tau, but this other coupled equation has a different tau. Um, in a real sense, that violates physics because all of the equations in a coupled system have to be evolving together on the same linked physical system of time. Um, here we only have one equation, so it's simplified. But, but keep that in mind for, for physical consistency when you go to more complicated systems. Now, um, we've, got, we've got one more step we can take here, which is um, what, what's the right tau for this, for this equation set? Um, we, we understand D, that's some material property of our fluid, the diffusion coefficient of our quantity C through the fluid. Um, we understand L, that's some length scale in our system, maybe the size of our pipe or our box or our star or whatever else. Um, but what of, what of tau? Well, in this system, um, there is only one, only one time scale, and there's only one set of physics happening in it, and that combines to dictate to us what, what our choice of tau should be. Um, in fact, another way of thinking is there's only one non-dimensional number, and that non-dimensional number, d tau over L squared, um, this, this controls all of the evolution of our system. Um, if this is all that we know, what do we choose for tau? Well, we're going to choose that this non-dimensional number is 1 um, if, if this is all that we know, because any other choice other than 1 is just an arbitrary rescaling of the system. So we choose that this is equal to 1, which tells us that tau is equal to L squared over D. And we call this a diffusion time. And we think of it as the time it takes for a quantity diffusing at rate D to go and diffuse across a length scale L. And because of the Laplacian, it comes in as the square of the length scale. Um, so bigger things take much longer to diffuse, quadratically longer to diffuse than smaller things. This is why small things get cold quickly. Big things retain their heat. Um, we apply this to animals in the world and planets in our solar system. All right. Um, Armed, armed with this choice here that, um, that d tau over L squared is equal to 1, then we can write our non-dimensional system down. Um, our non-dimensional system is that d by dt of c is equal to del squared c. And we have the quantity um, tau is equal to L squared over d, um, or equivalently, d over L. L squared times tau is equal to one. Um, and this, this is our, our non-dimensional system and our, our characteristic non-dimensional value for it is one. This fundamental underlying equation that governs diffusion in all systems um, is, uh, is, is why we can say that, um, that different systems behave in the same sort of way and that all systems have an exponential dependence on their diffusion and that the only difference in diffusion of different systems, say the diffusion of heat um, in the air of a room or the diffusion of heat in a, in a teacup um, or the diffusion of heat in a large astrophysical system like a star 
or a planetary core or a planetary atmosphere, um, the, the reason that they all, that they all follow the same set of systems and all that really changes is, is the time scale tau um, as we change the, the dimensional um, L, the length scale gets bigger or smaller, and the diffusion coefficient D might get bigger or smaller, depending on the, the material properties of the system. Um, this, this tau is the only thing that's fundamentally different in the diffusion problem between um, this room, um, where, where the heat diffuses quickly, uh, versus, say, a star where the heat diffuses over millions of years. The, the only difference is that the star is very big, so L squared makes that a very long time scale. And then we'd have to know something about the relative D coefficient. Um, we generally find for a star that the diffusion coefficient is probably a bit bigger than it is for air in an average room. Um, but on some, on some fundamental levels, um, the reason that diffusion takes a very long time in a star is just that it is so big, and so the, the time scale comes in in this sort of way. And this sort of non-dimensionalization allows us to apply the same set of understanding for rooms, for stars, for atmospheres, for oceans, and for everything else.